Hello and welcome to the Property Forum Chat Show with myself, Nicholas Woolwork, investor, developer and owner of PropertyForum.com. On today's show, we'll be discussing and asking questions around property finance and joint ventures. Are you an investor looking to finance your next development project, but you're a little bit unsure about which finance product to use? Buy to let, commercial mortgages or maybe even joint venture finance? Well, stay tuned and today's show is just for you. If you haven't seen our show before, each episode is based around a different area of property investment. We take questions from our online forum and we post them to our expert panel here in the studio. If you'd like to get involved in a future episode of the show, please log online to propertyforum.com. You can create a username, it's completely free, and you can pose your questions online. If your questions don't make it onto the show, I'm sure one of our expert panelists will answer it online. And we also have a forum membership of over 60,000 users and they'll be able to impart their wisdom if that helps you. We hope you enjoy the show, and we'll see you online soon. On our expert panel today, we're joined by Tim Bennett, a leading property finance expert from Vantage Finance, and also Judith Bilby, an experienced and successful joint venture investor and property sourcer from Red Brick Wealth. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So Tim, great to have you here today. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and expertise in property investment finance? Yeah, of course. So I've been doing um, working in the finance industry since 1997. So around that sort of time, I was working in various lending institutions. But more recently, I've been working on the broking side of things. So um, both sides of the fence for me. Superb. And Judith, can you tell us a little bit about your experience with property investment um, and what encouraged you to start using joint ventures as a way of financing your deals? Yeah, so I've been, um, I've been a landlord for many years, for about 20 years, and then I joined um, Red Brick Wealth as um, a property sourcer and also to raise joint venture finance. Um, and it quickly became apparent that using my own joint venture finance was going to enable me to exponentially grow my own property business, which is the situation I'm in now. Good stuff. Learning to be creative with your property businesses is, is key. Right, let's move on to some questions from the forum. Uh, first question I'm going to ask Tim, Tim to have a go at. This is from David from Manchester. I'm looking to become a property developer and have seen a great number of opportunities. Now the thing is, I've got a small to medium sized mortgage, but I have in excess of £800,000 equity stored in the property doing nothing. Is there a way of leveraging the equity out of the property without remortgaging? Yes, absolutely. I think the first thing David needs to do is um, get some proper financial advice when you're trying to pull money out of your properties, particularly if it's your main residence, um, is to weigh up all the options that you've got, take into account all the risks involved in doing that, and obviously look at the, the existing financial commitments that they've got. Um, also worth checking, or, or I'm sure they probably know, but um, whether there's a partner or a spouse involved that's named on the property as well. Um, that can be problematic um, if there is uh, a financial interest with someone else on that property when they're not benefiting from, from the loan. But there are plenty of options um, available um, to David um, in terms of mortgaging and, and, and bridging on a first or second charge basis. Okay, and I presume the lenders also look quite closely at what you're going to use the money for. Absolutely. They right, don't want yes. to see you waste that away. No, absolutely. So. Okay. I think that's quite common from um, from a, a, a JV partner as well, is that they might be sitting on a lot of equity in their home and the opportunity to use that, they don't even need to use it personally, but to find somebody who is a property yeah. expert yeah. and can and can and can use that and deliver them a much better return um, is 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 a, a very financially attractive option if you can yeah. get that right partnership. Definitely. So they're sort of lending off their existing property at a yeah. certain interest, yeah. but lending out to a JV a, a partner much at a higher better interest, interest rate yeah. and making the difference as yeah, profit. Absolutely. Yeah. Obviously, the security of that investment is absolutely key. However, it's a good way to to maximise the equity that you've got in your home, and obviously not that difficult to do through a, That's right. through a broker. That's right. Okay. Um, a question from Michael from Spain now. What tips do you have, perhaps from your own experiences and learned lessons, for ensuring your interest and cash investment are protected as much as possible when entering into a JV? Well, obviously, in, in terms of um, my side of it, I am the developer, so I work with, with my partners and I would be protecting their cash. 
and um, the first consideration is to make sure that you choose the right JV partner um, to make sure that um, that it's a secure site, that it has the profit in, that you've done your, your due diligence. Um, the, the emphasis really is on you, it's your cash, don't be, you know, don't be taken in with the idea that property is, is an absolute catch-all um, money deliverer. It's not, this is still a business plan and you need to absolutely ensure that that's viable. Um, I think something that is very important is to see what the opportunities of how you get your money and that there's more than one option. So whether you can refinance, whether you can sell, um, the period of the loan, um, and I think predominantly as well, the kind of contract that you use and make sure that no matter whatever's discussed in your, in your partnership, that's absolutely reflected in the contract because right. yeah. if things do go wrong, you've got the contract to fall back on. Definitely, I think that's key to any property investment, isn't it? Is getting the right contracts in place. Don't, yeah. don't trust too much in people, um, although it's good to trust, and that sort of should be a basis for any good ethical business. Always back that up with a contract. So if you know, a couple of years down the line, people might forget what was originally agreed, it's there in black and white, yeah. protecting your interests and obviously making sure um, with a JV scenario that your money's always secured on an asset. On an asset. Not unsecured. I think yeah. that's the key, isn't it, for, for any kind, right. kind of Abs lending. Absolutely. I mean, any any JV partner would have um, the first charge over the over the actual site. Yeah. So no money c can be drawn from the um, from the investor's side of it until until they have their money back, which is absolutely key. Definitely. Okie dokes. This is from Simon from Norwich. In what circumstances or with what type of property investment would you use a secured loan rather than a mortgage? So uh, with a secured loan, you would probably look to use that behind an existing mortgage. Now, the reason that you might want to do that is because your mortgage is currently on uh, a low rate of interest, especially if it's tracked to the Bank of England base rate, which is at an all-time low at the moment. So rather than refinancing the whole lot onto a potentially higher rate, you would just raise the money that you need on a secured loan rate yes that rate of interest will be higher but you're only paying for that portion of the loan that sure. you're that you're doing there so it's higher interest rate because it's higher risk for the lender that's right sitting behind that's the, right. the first mortgage. but you also might have your existing mortgage you might be tied in with early redemption penalties with that as well so again might not make sense to to move that that mortgage away better off to to raise it with a secured loan and once you're outside of that um, penalty period then you could look to consolidate the loan at a later stage. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Um, I, yeah, just, 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 just taking up on that point, I think that that's, I think that sometimes JVs and um, the finance can work really well mm. because if you're using um, um, cash from a JV partner and say, for example, I've had a, a site recently where the JV partner was happy to put in the cash for the purchase. However, the development funds would then come from um, right. from a bank, mm. um, and as long as the as long as the JV partner is happen to ha happy to have a second charge, then it's a really good way to mix and match so the JV partner isn't taking the whole exposure on the site and um, the development funds can come from I think it's a else. good way for people to raise the finance they need yeah. with secured loans any legal purpose essentially you can raise the money for so as long as the it checks out in terms of affordability whether that's on your main residence or whether that's on an investment property yeah. uh, the lending is always going to be based on on the affordability so if it is your main residence then it's going to be based on your personal income. If it's on a, an investment property, then it depends on the amount of uh, income that property is generating. Definitely, okay. Um, question from Jean from Surrey. Uh, this is um, one for Judith, I believe. When you're looking for a joint venture partner, would you go for somebody you know or a business acquaintance? I think again, it's it's so personal, and it's it's your your own gut instinct. You need to remember this is obviously your hard earned money. You need to make sure that you that you're very comfortable. And that joint venture partner might come from 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 anywhere. Um, I think looking um, on the property forum, we have a there's a I believe that there's a there's a, a, a section on there for for JVs. There's a dedicated sub forum Dedi for finding a JV partner. In yeah, fact. yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is really useful and just um, and just talking to people asking other people's experience um, I think what is really useful is going to networking meetings there'll be local networking meetings you'll be able to do a search online um, and just make sure that you're um, again you're very comfortable with what they're doing that it's deliverable um, and you've done your due diligence and that's backed up with a contract that reflects 
your interest. Make sure it's right for you Make and your sure circumstances right. and the deal, actually. Yeah. I guess that's with any finance, whether right. it's traditional lending, JV lending, it's making sure that you're using the right finance for your deal. Mm. Um, obviously, sometimes you have to use different types of finance at different stages of the deal. Mm. So you might start off with a, a bridge loan, you might replace that with traditional financing, or you might start off with a with a joint venture loan and mm. replace that at the end with the the end commercial finance. Mm, I just think take take your time and make sure that you've um, that you're completely comfortable and and secure. I think that would be my... not overexposed. Absolutely. A question from Emma from London. Um, I think this is one for you, Tim. If you're looking to raise finance for development, what is an expected way to package a deal from for potential investors in terms of its presentation? How much detail should I go into in creating the initial interest, and what would you expect to see? So it's a good question from Emma there. I think the best thing to do would be to provide as much detail as you can at the front end of the, of the process. Um, when you're only painting half a picture for investors and funders, it's difficult for them to, to get comfortable at that stage. So you really do want to put as much information as you can up front, and then you get a, a better lending decision in that respect. Yeah. Um, things to bear in mind and, and you want to highlight is going to be um, whether there's the planning proposals and permissions in place just to show that the scheme is a viable option and, and makes sense and it can be done. I think you want to um, provide things like um, plans, drawings, elevations, again, just to help bring the uh, proposal to life um, and uh, give a sense of scale, I think, for, for funders and investors. Background is all important in terms of experience. That's going to be the developer themselves. Yeah, their track record. And their the track deal. record, exactly yeah, right. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's key, I think, to, to a lot of this. And also the main contractor that they're, they're looking to use as well on the job. Um, that's that's vitally important as well. Yeah, and it, it doesn't rule out first-time investors or developers. You've got to start somewhere. Yeah, absolutely and right. Perhaps you, know, you need to do a bit more research and preparation if you're only starting out. And you're in your if first you are lacking deals, in experience, but... some lenders will exclude themselves, but there are lenders that are happy to, to, to have a look at the contractor that's going to be in place um, and base their lending decisions around that as well, as long as it's all you know, it's a, from a good pedigree, good good track record. Yeah. Um, but comparables is also an important thing, I think, as okay, well, yeah. just to show that you've done your homework, that the deal checks out. It is what, um, it is it worth is what, what it you is, say it's, it's going to be stack worth. up. But it yeah. also helps in terms of when you're getting that property surveyed along the way, um, just to make sure that you realise your full profit on there. Thanks, Tim. That's all we've got time for right now. But we'll be back shortly with some information from Judith on how to exit a joint venture.